Hello and welcome back to the Football Chat Podcast. It's episode number 63 and we're here reviewing West Ham's season and previewing their one to come. We have been doing this daily recently. There was a day gap though between West Ham and Tottenham, so I'm sorry to everyone out there. I know you obviously miss the podcast dearly, but we're back now. We have West Ham Day, Wolves tomorrow, and then we'll have five F like Premier League preview videos yes. going into the start of the season on Friday. So that's very exciting. I'm sure you're all buzzing for that at home. But today, West Ham is the focus of our attention, and we're gonna look back at last season where I guess we could talk about their European run. All the way to the semi-finals of the Europa League, where of course they fell at well almost the final hurdle to Frankfurt. Yeah, but they did really well in the tournament. They exceptionally beat some very very difficult teams, and to be honest, I think if Aaron Cresswell hadn't spent the whole thing trying to get sent off. Yeah, because obviously he's a key player for them. And look at it. he got sent off in the second leg of the quarters, which meant he missed the first leg of the semis. He then came in in the second leg of the semis and got sent off. Yeah. It was, I don't know. They kind I, of I think West Ham were two players, maybe three players away from winning the Europa League. Yeah. And definitely. I think, based on their recruitment this summer, or what is rumoured now, I think they've done exactly what they needed to do this I mean, window. Obviously, the big one, uh, which we'll, well, we'll get to. I was going to say, we'll look into is, it when we get to recruitment. Uh, but okay, yeah, we'll wait. yeah, oh, keep, keep them waiting. Suspense. I mean, probably to talk about yeah. in squad keep or sell. But. Also, same place in the league. I think that's about the best they could ask for. I think they should have been ahead of United. I I, I think they might prefer it, though. Because I think there yeah, was more chance of them winning the Conference League than the Europa League. I think the only fear is, of course, if they had lost Declan Rice. But there yeah. seems to be no potential suitors right now. I think West Ham could rip up the Conference League. They should. They should. Yeah. There is competition out there. Yeah. I'm thinking of the French League. I believe it. Is it Marseille or in Europa? Isn't it not? No, not when 11th. Oh, no. Well, but there, are some, there is some strong competition there. And I think West Ham will do well, though. And they will... And, of course, there'll be clubs dropping down from the Europa League. And that could be that could be pretty tough. I think they've got Lazio from Italy, which will be, a, if they have to play them, a tough game. But yeah. overall, they should be able to beat the likes of Ferenc Varos. Yeah. And the clubs that are like I mean, LASK I and stuff at, like that. I look at last year's semi-finals... I think they'd have beaten Feyenoord. I think they'd have beaten Marseille. I think they'd have beaten Leicester. It, and even Roma. I was going to say Roma would, would have been a very tough game. I think even Leicester would have been tough. But West Ham now, I think, are a lot stronger. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, should we get into what squad keep was selling? Because yeah. there has been it's some additions squad. already. It's a strong squad. There has been some people leaving. And, but I still think there is some weaknesses. But we'll look yeah. at that now. Of course, this is a without. So this we're recording this on the Friday. So there's potential for stuff yeah. to happen overnight before and we post this. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully West, if West Ham could just wait a couple of days, so this still is valid for a for a couple of days, that'd be nice. But yeah, uh, let's have a look, a look at their squads and them. West Ham United in the keeper position. I think they're, they're all sorted. keepers. They are sorted. Fabianski, Ariola joined on a permanent this summer, I believe, and Darren Randolph. Is there? I think that's also. one of the strongest pair of keepers in the Premier League. Fabianski and Ariola. I think in terms of a pair, only Chelsea have a better one. Yeah. And potentially Newcastle are close because they've got three. The Bruff. They've got about nine keepers yeah, actually. Because Woodman's not even that bad. They've got the Bruff because they've got Darlow and now they've got Pope. Uh, and, and they're stacked in the keeper position. Uh, Elliot. I don't think. I think Rob Elliot left, didn't he? I think he oh, went to Watford. Not. Oh yeah, he did. That's um, yeah. about a year ago. But <laughs> that, that, that that was their best keeper. Yeah, West Ham uh, very sore yeah, in the goalkeeper department. Uh, some good depth there. Into the defence then, Ben Johnson, obviously young keep. right back, really blossomed He's last season with more minutes. With Indeed, he is. Aaron Cresswell, I would not have him starting, and I think they may remedy that in the coming days with the potential signing of Philippe Kostic. If they can get Kostic, that's fantastic. Obviously, and it depends where he plays. I don't yeah. think he'd play left back. I think he'd play left yeah. mid, probably. But they, he I would just add some really nice cover on that side. And can also cover at centre-half if they want to go free back. Yeah, and with Kostic in front of him, he may be offered more defensive cover. I still think they could bring in Maxwell Cornet, and we know he can play left back. Fair, they might want to go free back and play Kostic left wing back. Potentially, that would be a very good way to make use of his talent. But then, what do you do with the midfield? Potentially a 3-4-3, three, 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 I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would make a lot of sense because they haven't got any mid- central midfielders. No. So they need as, as little yeah. midfielders as possible. As many that would, as, as possible, that would that allow Sue Fowl to go further forward and then Cresswell could offer it. We also know Ben Johnson's very good at right wing back as well. Yeah, that would work very well. I, I believe they did play a three back last season yeah, for most at of it. Some point. And it was Cresswell at left centre back in those European ties. Yeah, well, they rotate between God. a three. So enough, I believe. Four. Three, yeah. They rotate between 3 4 3 yeah. and 4 2 3. There was changes throughout the season. Kurt Zuma, then. Obviously, fantastic centre half. Yes. Um, as long as he makes sure he's kicking the football. Yep. Um, no more yeah. discre- what is it discrepancies, Off-field. disciplinary issues. Yeah. Should be fine. Uh, very good centre half, very yeah. solid. And he formed a formidable partnership with Craig Dawson at times last season. I still think they need to add a centre back because we'll get on to the others. Craig Dawson. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, to be fair, they did add a centre back, didn't they? I completely forgot oh, yeah. about that. But Craig Dawson. Very yeah. decent I season last year. You might have to play every game now because of the new signing. Well, they've also got then Angelo Bonner and Issa Diop potentially move one of them on. I think you sell. I think Diop. they're fine as debt. Yeah, I've, too fair. Too I fair. Think, if they play three yeah. back, they want as many you, as You want as depth. As you get. And then they've got Nath Aguard, who's joined Good from signing. Wren. And I think Good that's a signing. very, very decent signing. I believe it was for the uh, sum of £20 million pounds that they. As uh, we saw. have acquired the Moroccan. Yeah. As we saw last year, Craig Dawson struggled to play every single game. And especially with the World Cup and having to jam fixtures in, you want as many rotation players as you can get. Yeah. So, you know, they can rest Dawson in uh, in, in games. They can rotate around. I don't think the World Cup's going to be an issue for West Ham. I don't think Zuma's yeah. going to displace Kimpembe, Varane, or even, yeah. like... Oh, yeah, um, I know they're not going for the World Cup. Obviously, they're, they're still be playing games every two days. Yeah, of course, in the run up to it. So you need depth. Them. Yeah, especially if they're in European competition. So that's going to make that a lot more difficult. <laughs> Masaraku, I think if you bring Costage and Cornet. You can sell. Masaraku can be let go. But they go. did increase, They did uh, extend his contract this season, this summer. So. Strange. I would say it's strange. He can, he can do a job, but I don't rate him. No, he's not great. Yeah. Uh, then on to midfielders then. Pablo Fornells. Got very good cube, isn't it? very yeah. decent to play if they play with an attacking mid it'll be very solid in that role if they don't well it could open the door I guess to a potential move away for four now because he's not playing centre mid with a, a likes of Rice if they could play a 3 4 I guess a more defensive role he could play in but I, I think he'd rather play him out on the wing if yeah. they were to go for a 3-4-3 yeah. Lanzini is another one who, Same if they don't really, play yeah. with an attacking mid, they, he could be in trouble. But equally, I think Lanzini's more suited to playing a central midfield yeah, role because he's a bit more bitey. Yeah, a bit more physical. To be fair, Fornals, I think, could do a very good job in the midfield. Yeah. And he could also play on in that left wing back position, potentially. Maybe, yeah. He's definitely, got the, that, he's definitely yeah. got the legs for yeah. it. And if he's got defensive cover behind him, that could be very effective. So he could be a good rotation option there. Lanzini can do it in wide areas. Nikola Vlasic. They brought him in a, a year ago now. He's not really had an impact, but I think given time... Just keep him around. He can develop. 19 goals last year. 13 of those were sub Sorry, 19 games. Oh God, he didn't tear up the league Jesus. and no one mentioned it. 19 games last season. 13 of those were sub-appearances and only one goal in all that time. He's, 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 he's decent. He can kind of just stick around if they need him. Yeah, of course he has got Premier League experience. Playing for Everton in 2017-18. Of course, I forgot about that. He did three years there, went to CSK in Moscow for a season, and then West Ham decided, you know what, worth a pump. Yeah. And to be fair, he didn't do terribly in his first season, considering the lack of minutes he got. But yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's a decent. I, I think it was a decent signing at the time. I think he could still develop into a good player, yeah. especially as a player in attacking mid. He can also play in wide areas, so it, he's got. He's got the ability, I think, to play well for him. Definitely. And a very good rotation option, even if he only plays FA Cup. Yeah. He could do very well in that tournament. And then, looking at the rest of the midfielders, you've got Flynn Downs, who's a young central midfielder they brought in from Fulham, I believe. Is Hull. It Hull. That's, is it Hull? Yeah. I think it's Hull. Sounds, sounds about right. And then Connor Coventry, also both young. Yeah, both. They players. have to keep him around because they haven't got any yeah. centre mids. Because then they're only, I guess you could say, full time. Not, yeah. not full time, but professional. Um, is Suchek and Rice. They're both fancy capes. Yeah, but then after that, are oh, you relying on four now so you're able to play as a six or no, an eight? I don't know. That sounds... Con- 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 Coventry. Coventry's good. In the Cowboy Cup, and depending on who they get yeah, in the but... Conference League. He's, he's, oh, sorry, Connor Coventry's MK Dons. Oh, they've loaned him out. On loan. Okay, well, he's not there. What are they doing with Flynn Downs? Flynn Downs at the club. Have they're going to have to sign a central midfielder, and they, they don't seem to be linked with any. I mean, yeah. we'll have a look at. Uh, we'll yeah. have a quick look at 
transfer rumours after this, but I mean, the players they've brought in, the players they've been linked with, are not central refers. They have bit, a bid in for one, though, which is Amadou Onana from oh, Lille. Yeah, that's really about £38 million. I think that's a bit steep, but he's yeah, certainly he's a very good defensive midfielder, and I think he'll be very effective for West Ham. Thank you, a lot of he's a backup, though, which I think indicates Rice is going in a year's time. If he's right, a, de- a Declan Rice. A, a year to adjust, and then let, let, you can let Rice go. I think potentially as well, Rice and Onana could start together, yeah. and we could see the phasing out of Thomas Suchek into a more uh, rotation option. Though, of course, if yeah. Declan Rice leaves in a year's time, you kind of want Onana to be playing with Suchek. So yeah. maybe, yeah, Rice. I think Rice and Suchek will probably start together. Onana will be the rotation option Definitely. for this season, looking at potentially Rice moving on at the end of the year. All right. Looking at forwards then, our final bit of the pitch to look at, we have Mikel Antonio. Now, we've recorded this podcast before, it corrupted. I said on that that Antonio needed to be replaced because he's not good enough. He has been replaced. They have gone out and replaced him. I do think Antonio in the on a wing... And as backup striker. Or obviously. even right wing back, and of course as backup striker, but even in right wing back, if they play yeah. with wing backs, he can be very effective because you could swap... You could. Um, Put Sufau into the back three. Yeah. And then play with Antonio or someone at right wing back. And he'd be a unit out there. Or even middle midfield. He's a very versatile player, Antonio. Yeah. And that would be, I think that would suit him very well, middle midfield. But he's not a goal scorer, really. He did really well at the start of last season. Then the goals tapered off. And that's where West Ham fell short, I think, last season. But they have done well. And they've not rested on their laurels. They've brought in Gianluca Scamacca. And I think this is a very inspired signing. So, kind of a breakout campaign at Sassuolo yeah. last season. A Sassuolo side that played very well. We saw stars like Giacomo Raspadori, uh, Fratelli, I believe his name is. Players like that do yeah. really, really well. And Gianluca Scamacca, the pick of those. He has now joined West Ham for a fair 30 mil. He's linked with PSG. So, held in high regard by Europeans' best, he's now at West Ham. And I think in the starting berth there, he's going to do very well. To the point where he might feature on my fantasy team. You'll have to wait for our fantasy... Uh- Premier League episode coming out. I mean, I think it's before the season easy start. to say what his signing is. He will score goals. Yeah, he certainly will. It might take him a couple of games. He's very it, tall, six foot exactly. four, absolutely mental. He's not one of your players that's going to struggle to adapt because he is a physical player. Yeah. He is a fast player. He's going to bully you off the ball. But if you've got Kostic on one wing and Ben Johnson, the tactic is just put yeah. balls in the area. Yeah. No one is out jumping Jan Lucas No. no. So. They've got a very easy route to goals there. They've yeah. got Jared Bowen, of course, still there, who we'll go on to now. Bowen and Ben Rama. I imagine they'll be starting on the wings this year. Yes, definitely. Got to be the starters, I think, ben over Rama the left. Maybe Fornells over Ben Rama on the left. Maybe Lanzini over Ben, Ar- ben Rama like on the left. But there is no doubt in my mind that Jared Bowen starts every single game. Ben Rama cutting right foot from that left-hand side and Bowen bombing it down the wing. Of course. Just doing what he did we saw last Bowen uh, take the Chelsea game in particular where West Ham managed to beat them 3-2. Yeah. That was a game where Jabba really, really impressed me. Fantastic player he's becoming now. He always showed the ability at Hull, and I always thought he'd be a very good player, but he's he's now becoming a player who and has to be on the radar of top European clubs. What I also think with Skamaka in there as well, is you can get the ball to Skamaka, and he can flick it onto Bowen. We saw Bowen getting in behind, running through the middle last year. Mm. I particularly remember his goal at Leicester, where the ball was played through, he made his run through the middle, and yeah. he scored a beautiful one-on-one. But that's what I'm saying, Skamaka can flick it onto him, so you, not only can Skamaka get the ball himself and score, he can also use his height yeah. and his physical to hold the ball up for the likes of Bowen. Yeah, the whole of play is very, very good. That is it for the squad then. I think it's a little light on numbers. I'd, if I, I think, was West Ham, I would want maybe yeah. another midfield, another midfielder and possibly another I player. think the problem is they've got three attacking midfielders and it looks mm. like this year they could go to a 3-4-3, which doesn't really accommodate for the players they've got. But... It is the system which I think they'd work best in, but then yeah. you need to be moving on potentially either Lanzini or Fornals. I probably move Definitely. on Lanzini. Fornals is a very talented player, and Vlasic. Well, He's there. he only joined a year ago, but if you're not playing attacking midfielders, the point of Vlasic and Lanzini mm. is uh, it's not there. No. But I guess if you are swapping between the four-two-three-one and three-four-three, three, you've got rotation options there. But they definitely need to bring in central midfielders. Onana would do very well, I think. Yeah. So I think that's a good signing. They definitely need to bring in a left back. I think Cornet would fit the profile very nicely. Cornet can play anywhere out that left. Side. And then Kostic, of course, as I well. Either as a left winger or as a left wing back. One, uh, you can do either of those roles very, very If they very get Kostic, Cornet, Onana, 
Wow, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Yeah, because I guess if they did do the four two three one and had four now attacking mid, Bowen right, Kostic left, Skamaka through the middle, Rice Suchek, Cornet left back, Ben Johnson or Sufau starting at right back, and then Aguard and Zuma, I guess, starting centre half. And you're telling me you could bring on I think the fact they've got so many centre backs does tell Yeah. Does go a long way to say, Oh yeah, they're gonna go three back, but But I'll be honest. It's hard to say. That is a very good looking West Ham team. I'm just seeing whether anyone's gone out on loan, like Ockbonner's Venice or something. But no, they're all, all still there. So they are. They have got five centre halves now at the club. I I genuinely think they strong West Ham. Like very strong West Ham. Last side. season we saw what they did with the squad they have. I think it's an improved squad, especially if they can get those three signings. Because what what have they lost? Noble. It's fine. Yarmolenko, who they might replace with Kostic. Yeah. They should be looking at the European. They got rid of. I'm trying to remember all the others that left. There wasn't too many. Ryan Fredericks left on a free as well. Yeah. He's joined Bournemouth now. So he could come back to haunt his former side player for Bournemouth. But no, I very I much doubt it. In you know, Europe, but... I think they've got to be looking at success. They've got to be looking at winning that Conference League. I think that would mean a lot more than finishing top four. Because yes, yeah, finishing top four, oh yeah, you've got Champions League football next season. That'd be amazing for West Ham. I think the. the like the board would love that the money they see if you get to the Champions League and also the pl- kind of players you can attract but if you win the Conference League for the fans yeah. I think that's so much bigger and I think that's the big finishing thing fourth. I think the thing that gives West Ham an extra edge an extra player is their atmosphere at home because for those of you who that Olympic Stadium last is year, pretty nice that yeah. was that atmosphere there was incredible so it helps the, but if you're walking out there's mm. loads of these fans singing their song They've got bubbles. You've got bubbles in your face, and, crap, and, you, and you look to your left, and Skamaka's standing there, and he's like seven foot tall. I've refused to play. No, look to your left. You look up. Yeah, you look up. Just directly <laughs> up. He's there. Yeah, towering over you. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere. And and I was going for a to play for. I think yeah. for any side, and I genuinely think West Ham will beat Manchester City on the end day. That will be. That will be. Uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm predicting. And, and I think when we're watching it, sat here on TFC Live in eight days' time. We will see West Ham beat Man City. Who knows? Well, I, I do. I can see the future. I, I think they should be looking. I think if they, they, they win the Conference League and then qualify in the European place, I think yeah. they'll. I, I think they'll miss out on top four because there's other teams that are better than them and they can't do anything about that. I don't know. It depends. The World Cup, I think, is going to have a bigger impact than people yeah, are. Good point. West Ham won't get suggesting. Affected. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I think West Ham could go. I think they could have a really good run of early season form. Yeah. World Cup, it's, it's a, you know, injuries are going to be a big problem. They're playing in ridiculous heat. Their games are so condensed to a three-week, four-week World Cup. Yeah. I think it's four weeks. Yeah. So the games are so tightly packed. I think there's a good chance players are going to get injured. Especially all the teams that go away to the final. Exactly, because they're going to be playing in this intense heat every day with about four days, sorry, not every, yeah. I mean like every four days or yeah. so. And those games can go extra time penalties. I think it's going to be very tough for those players, especially, say England get all the way. It's only going to be like Jared Bowen, but he's not going to start for England. He might start. I mean, it would be amazing if he did, but I don't think he will. No. And I guess Declan Rice. Rice as well, but... That would be it for the West Ham squad that I think would even go to the World Cup. Because I would say Skamaka, but Italy haven't qualified. Uh, Fabianski, potentially, but you think Chesney would probably start for them. Fans will go there as a backup. He will go, but I don't think Poland are going to win it. They've got Larice, they've got Lafon, they've got my Nan. There's definitely options out there for France. So I think it will only be Rice and Bowen going. They're probably going, aren't they? Jamaica at the World Cup. Don't think so. No, that it no, it, they have no. to have seen Louis and Bailey in like those or oh, best oh, yeah. eleven not going to the World Cup, and I do think that's where someone like City as well with the World Cup could benefit because obviously Haaland won't be going, so potentially yeah. he could do really well. He and I don't think, generally. yeah, but then they have got a lot of England players, so you yeah. never know. I think the World Cup will have a bigger impact than people think. Though. I think and West I, Ham will have a good year though. I think West Ham because of that could do really well. Yeah, I guess yeah. I was about to say four now Spain, but. I don't think he's no. going to... Well, potentially. They don't really have wingers. Other than Ferran Torres and Ansu Fati. They're, They're pretty, really pretty decent wingers, yeah. yeah but <laughs> that's about all for today. I will have a quick look on just Googling, see if they've yeah. got any transfer links. Of course, we've mentioned Philip Kostic. We've mentioned 
Amadou Onana we've mentioned. Mm, uh, Cornet. Maxwell Cornet. But we'll just have a little look to see what West Ham are up to. So if there is anything that we've not mentioned... Although Oliver Glasner, the Eintracht Frankfurt manager, has said that he's sure Philip Kostic will stay, and West Ham have been told a price tag to sign Philip Kostic, apparently. That's all from Football London and Evening Standard. Uh, Sky Sports say that West Ham are still working on a Kostic deal, uh, and two days ago West Ham were told to sign Armando Bro instead of Skamaka, but Skamaka has joined, so I don't know who's told him that, but they've not listened. <laughs> okay, but, okay, so West Ham have bid 12 mil for Kostic, uh, Frank for, for well, 17 oh that's hardly a price tag that's like going oh yeah uh, we don't <laughs> like I was thinking 30 mil 40 mil not yeah. uh, just add 5 mil please yeah so. apparently though it's looked likely that a 15 mil bid could be enough right so actually and also it seems like Kostic has already told West Ham he's interested Zielinski is another player oh, and Italian is. media believe a Zielinski fee is now agreed with Napoli, so very big signing image. Sorry, if they bring in Kostic, Corne, Skamaka, Zielinski, Onana, West Ham will be incredibly strong next season. Incredibly strong. Wow. Because in that you have like you could move, you could have Zielinski in the attacking mid role. Yeah. Or he could drop into the midfield. Yeah. And play with Rice or Onana. So very very strong West Ham side. I think that is all for today. Though loose predictions for the Premier League. Where do you think they will finish? Europe. Europe places. I think Europe is almost guaranteed now, especially since I don't think United will be up the sharp end this campaign. I think United will do well I think be, after Christmas. I think it'll be around top four. But it really depends on the form of the other top four and how many players yeah. they fit. I think West Ham will get off to a good start. It's whether they can maintain that. Because they got off yeah. to a really good start last year and then slipped away throughout the season. But I think it, with a deeper squad now... Definitely. With a better quality of rotation options, Skamaka yeah. or Yarmolenko, I know who I'm taking, and it's not Yarmolenko, sorry Andre if you're listening, but Skamaka is a lot better. But yeah, I think there's, there's definitely options out there. Yeah. I think I think West Ham could do well. Really yeah. Interesting. I, yeah, I think Europe is pretty much on the cards. That is all for today though. Thank you all very much for listening or watching. If you're on Spotify, head on over to the YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, head on over to Spotify, share the love, hit all the fun buttons that do fun things like downloading, liking, subscribing, following and commenting. Of course, we'd love to hear from you guys. So make sure to get your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. But that is all for today. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.